This Formula 1 steering wheel costs over £30,000 and with good reason, as it's the most important component of an entire Formula 1 car. Not only will the driver use this to steer into and out of corners, they'll also have control over hundreds of different settings to make sure their car is always performing at its best out on track. Here's how they do it. Every Formula 1 steering wheel is custom made for the person driving the car. It is hand built using a carbon fibre structure for the core. Like the rest of the car, it is very light but also very strong and can handle all of the forces that both the car and driver place on it during a race. Surrounding the core are a pair of rubber grips, which are cast and moulded to specifically fit each driver's hand. This ensures that the driver has the most comfortable grip possible and isn't distracted while going flat out around the racetrack. Another key component is the quick release system at the back of the wheel. Modern FIA safety requirements dictate that a driver should be able to exit their car in less than 7 seconds. However, the space within a Formula 1 cockpit is so tight that the driver needs to remove the steering wheel in order to get in and out. The quick release system is pretty standard amongst race cars these days and is very similar to the one you may have on your sim racing wheel at home. Inside the wheel itself is an elaborate array of wiring and electronics with around 10 meters of cabling in total. That's a lot to pack into such a small space, but like most things in Formula 1, it's an impressively tidy package once it's all done up. A team will make around 3 wheels per driver at the start of the season and may add more as the design gets updated throughout the races. This, combined with the materials, safety requirements and the customization of each wheel, results in one that takes up to 5 weeks to assemble and costs over £30,000 to produce and set up. For comparison, a high quality sim racing wheel costs about £300 and a one to one replica model of a real wheel can cost up to £5,000. For the price though, a driver will have the ability to control every aspect of how the car works. So let's take a look at what all of those buttons and dials do now. A Formula 1 steering wheel contains over 20 points of control for the driver to modify throughout a race. These are a combination of military spec buttons, rotary switches, dials and the paddles on the back of the wheel too. On top of this, there's a large display and three arrays of LED lights to quickly give a driver the information they need. The top row of lights is essentially the car's rev meter, guiding the driver on the best times to change gears. The marshal lights are on either side of the display. These will flash in different colours, depending on what flags are being waved to the driver around the circuit. The display itself is the car's dashboard. This will provide the driver with key information like the gear number, lap time details, battery charge and more. Below the display are a trio of dials, which the driver can use to change between different engine modes, save fuel, recharge the car's battery, or set the car up to behave in a specific way, like when on a qualifying run. Around the driver's thumbs are up to six rotary encoders, three on each side. These will primarily control the car's differential and brake balance. The driver can adjust the way the car behaves on the entry, through the middle and beyond the exit of a corner, letting them find the right balance between oversteer and understeer for every turn on the circuit. Next up we have the buttons on the car, and if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit the like button as well. On top of everything we've discovered so far, the Formula 1 steering wheel has over 10 different buttons. These are custom to every driver, but follow a similar range of functions across all cars. Every driver will have their own preferences on where certain commands are placed on the wheel, just like how you change the controller layout in your favourite video game. Looking at this Mercedes wheel for example, we can see the neutral button on the top left. This is used to put the car into a neutral gear when it's stopped at the end of the race, and if the driver holds it down, the car will go into reverse gear. In the middle on both sides are the driver default buttons. If something goes wrong during a race, the engineer will tell the driver to select a specific number in the car's menu, and these two buttons will help him get to that number and make the change. The OK button confirms this setting. On the inside left is the DRS, which opens a gap on the rear wing to help the car pass another on track. Over on the right you have the pit lane speed limiter, which automatically locks the car to a maximum speed of 80 km an hour, and on the inside is the pit confirm. When the team want to make a pit stop, this is the driver's way of letting them know that he's acknowledged it. It's normally faster than turning on the radio and saying yes, especially mid-corner. On the bottom you have two buttons for brake balance, one to move it forwards and one to move it backwards. Next you have the marker button. This doesn't do anything to the car, but instead places a marker on the telemetry data sent back to the team. If a driver wants to give feedback about a particular corner, this is an easy way for the team to find that corner in the data and see what's going on. Another important button is the radio. Once the driver presses this, they open the communication channel to the team and can have a conversation before he switches it off again. And above this is the race start control, giving the driver the maximum power output for the start of the Grand Prix. 
As mentioned before, these buttons are specific to each driver, and some will change the layouts, have different commands like a drinks bottle, and more. If you want some insight into how each driver sets up their wheel, I've linked a few more videos in the description, and you can click on the one on screen now to set up your own wheel too. Thanks for watching, see you soon.